Okay, so what we got here is one of those horizontally projected projectile questions. All right, remember that for any projectile motion problem, you need to break it up into vertical and horizontal, draw a diagram for your given, whatever. Okay, let's see if we can figure out okay, how high the cliff has to be so a person who runs off the cliff at 8 meters per second would hit the water 15 meters from the base of the cliff. Okay. All right, so we got this person who's going to run off the cliff. They're going to run off the cliff at 8 meters per second. So that's our horizontal constant velocity, 8 meters per second. Okay, and they're going to hit the water 15 meters from the base of the cliff. Okay, and the other things we know, because they ran horizontally, we know VI vertical is zero. We know the acceleration vertically is 9.81 meters per second squared down. Right? We are looking for the vertical displacement. What do I need? Time. Can I find it with my horizontal information? Yes, you can. Okay, because horizontally, we always use V equals D over T. So T will equal D over V, 15 meters, divided by 8 meters per second. Okay, so it was like 1.9 or something like that, right? Okay, so I'm just going to get the number so I have it. Okay, 1.875. That's the only number that can go back and forth between horizontal and vertical. Now that I have that, now I can calculate D simply by plugging in to this formula, which I can simplify down to that because VI is zero. Okay? So we're just going to have that D equals 1 half times 9.81 times 1.875 squared. So 4.5, um, sorry, 4.905. Okay, that's half of 9.1 times that answer squared. Okay, so the cliff has to be, oh, we only have one significant digit here. Two times 10 to the one meters. I won't do that on the test. I'll never give you a question that would have one significant digit. That's just silly. Okay, um, so yeah, 17 meters or two times 10 to the one meters would be the height of the cliff. Okay, is that ringing a bell? Okay. Um, so you're aware, this, uh, m this morning, I put your unit exam review package on Google Classroom, right? There are a number of review questions, some of which are beyond what I would ask on the unit exam. So it says challenge question, it's beyond what I'm gonna ask, it's just if you need to be humble, you can try that, okay? Um, and most of them are old exam questions, so it gives you a pretty good idea of wording a level of difficulty, okay, stuff like that. Um, so definitely have a look at that uh, before next week. I will tell you, okay, uh, that we will do a unit exam review next week, and that on your unit exam there will be one projectile motion question like this, and there will be one projected at an angle like the mega loop one we did yesterday. Okay, we're going to be looking at more of those here over the coming days. Okay. All right. Um, Okay, before we do this one, so in this one, we are looking for the speed, horizontal speed, in this case, that the ball rolls off the table. Okay? We know the table is 1 point, sorry, 1 1.2, not 1.7, 1 1.2 meters tall, okay? and we know that it hits the ground 0.85 meters horizontally from the base of the table, so that's its horizontal distance traveled. So if I want to find V horizontal, what else do I need? T. We're always looking for time. At some point, you're going to have to find time in a projectile motion question, because it's the one thing you can use on both sides. All right, so in this case, T is going to equal the square root of D over 1 half of A, okay, as it always does. So that'll be 1.2 divided by 0.5 times 9.81. All right, so half a second, roughly, okay? 0.49 seconds is the time it'll take to fall to the ground. So I can transfer that over to here, 0.49 seconds, and then V equals D over T, 0.85 or 0.49. All right, 
So it was moving at 1.7 meters per second horizontally when it rolled off the table. Okay, and we only have two significant digits here, so 1.7 would be our speed it rolled off the table. Okay? All right, so we've just watched an example of terrible movie physics. Okay? And, well, there's really no excuse for it. Um, but what I'm going to show you is now, has anyone ever watched the original Dukes of Hazard TV show? It's hard to find on TV now because nobody plays it. But like a few years ago, you could. I am so sorry that your childhood is missing out on that because my childhood didn't. Okay. Now, if you want an example of a pretty wholesome show, the reason they don't show it anymore is because the top of the Duke's car has a Confederate flag on it, which is understandably not acceptable. Okay. Um, but the rest of the show is pretty wholesome as far as that goes. Um, what they did well in this show was practical effects. The whole show was police chasing moonshiners who would drive their car in incredibly crazy ways and jump over basically everything, because apparently in the county, in Hazard County, Georgia, there are no bridges. Roads just end at rivers and lakes, and then there's a road on the other side, and you just are expected to jump your car across it. And that's what they do in the Dukes of Hazard constantly. Okay, like seven seasons worth of jumping bright orange 69 Dodge Chargers over stuff. Okay, by the end of the show, they couldn't get 69 Chargers anymore. They were filming challengers from similar, from different angles because they would look similar. Right, okay? because they had destroyed so many of these beautiful cars. But if you want to see what a practical effect and proper projectile motion looks like. You have to watch shows where they really did jump cars, okay? And in these cars, they were not remote controlled either. There were stunt men in these cars, okay? They're, these were legit stunts, okay? And, and most of them anyway. In some of them where the car was going to obviously be destroyed, there was no stunt driver. But in most of them, there was a stunt driver, okay? Somebody had to pilot, literally, that car, okay, across the chasm over which it would jump. Right. Now, incidentally, if you become a stunt driver and you have to jump a car, how do you hold the steering wheel? Besides tight. Ten and two. Ten and two. Thumb under? No. Yeah, thumb over. You put your thumb under, broken thumbs. Okay, as soon as you hit the ground, boom, smash, thumbs crack. Okay, so you always have them on top. That's not how you would normally steer a car. Normally you'd have your thumb under, but if you're a stunt driver, it's thumb on top. Otherwise, you break your thumbs. Okay. Okay, so we'll walk through this one together because we've only done one other angled projectile. Um, so we've got the generally jumping over the riverbed. Okay, the information that we know is that the speed the generally launches itself at is 32 meters per second, about 120 kilometers an hour. Okay, it is going to follow that projectile arc across the river, landing on the other side at the same height it took off from, or at least we're going to assume that. The angle of the launch is 20 degrees. Okay. That's all the information they give us. 32 meters per second, 20 degrees. And I have to calculate two things. The distance horizontally across the river and the maximum height of the car as it goes over. Okay. So what should I do first? Probably. Oh, no, sorry. What what do I want to write first? I don't want to calculate anything just yet. Oh, um, your givens. My givens, exactly. Okay. And I want to figure out and actually calculate a few of my other pieces of information that I can get from this. Okay, because remember, this is not the speed vertically or horizontally. This is the velocity 20 degrees above horizontal. That means it has a horizontal component that will be our horizontal velocity, and it has a vertical component. That will be our initial vertical velocity. This you have to remember about all projectiles projected at an angle, okay? This triangle, there is a projected velocity an initial vertical that is the y component of its triangle, 
and the horizontal component that is the x component of its triangle. Okay? So, vertically speaking, I know the acceleration is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay? And I can calculate VI. Okay? It's the opposite side, so I'm going to go sine of 20 times 32 meters per second. So that means the general Lee is moving at 10.94 meters per second vertically upwards. So I'm going to make that positive because I made down negative. Okay. Um, I'm going to put some horizontal information on here as well. Okay. I know I want to find the horizontal displacement no way to calculate that right now, but I can calculate, whoops, that's sure, this should all be green, I'm trying to keep them separate. Since this is the x component, I'm just going to go cos of 20 times 32 to get my constant horizontal velocity for this question, so cos of 20 times 32, 30.07 meters per second. All right, so it, as it's flying through the air, it's moving horizontally at over 30 meters per second, which is pretty fast. Okay. All right, if I want to get D, what else do I need? So I'm probably going to have to get that from my vertical information. But right now, it doesn't look like I have enough vertical information to do that. So here's what I'm going to do. i got to recognize that the launch point, which is right here, and the impact point are level. And yesterday we said if I throw something up in the air and it comes back down, when it comes back down, it's going the same speed it left at in the opposite direction. That's still true. If I only looked at the General Lee jumping over from a vertical perspective, I would see it go up and come back down. That's it. From a vertical perspective, that's all it does. So I can safely assume in this situation that VF will be negative 10.94 meters per second. Now do I have enough information to get time? Okay, so the time is going to be VF minus VI over A, just manipulating our grade 10 science formula. So that's going to be negative 10.94 minus 10.94 divided by negative 9.81. So I'm just going to multiply that by 2 and then divide by 9.81. Same deal. Okay, so the car is going to be in the air for 2.23 seconds. Okay, that's the flight time of the car. Okay, can I bring that over to the horizontal? Okay, that means that now I can calculate how far it is across the river to make that jump. Okay, so we're going to have our 30.07 times 2.23 and I'm going to use all the decimals that were in my calculator. So Okay, that's 67 meters. That's two-thirds of one of the straight sides of our track. Yeah, it's a long way, <laughs> okay? Like, they legit jumped that car a long, long way, okay? So, now, that was only one part of what we were supposed to calculate. We were also supposed to calculate, I'm gonna run out of time, the maximum height. Well, where does the maximum height occur? In the middle. In the middle. How fast vertically is it going at its maximum height? Zero. Zero. 
Okay, so now you got VF isn't 10.94, now VF is zero, and you're looking for D. Remember how I said this formula is going to come up all the time in projectile motion? Yeah. That's where we'll use it. Okay, we'll finish that up on Monday. Have yourselves a good weekend, but not too good.